ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I'm in London, off on the start of another very brief adventure. In a similar vein to the Route 66 series, you might have seen those videos, if not, feel free to check those out. I'm off to Berlin, <laughs> but that's not till tomorrow. So we're going to go uh, see Radiohead, friend and I. We're going to go see Radiohead in Berlin, which should be interesting. A uh, chance to see, I haven't seen them for a long time. And uh, explore the famous capital, it's one I've never been to, which is surprising. I've been to a few. I've been to Paris, Copenhagen, Istanbul, Vienna. Never been to Berlin. It's going to be my first time. Been to Germany once before. But uh, yeah, things are a little different there. <laughs> For the better in, in, in a lot of ways. And uh, we'll be sure to, to check out the sites. But first, I uh, decided to meet a friend for dinner in London. But seeing as I've got the whole day, I've never been to Kew Gardens. Uh, Kew Gardens is like a botanical uh, wonderland of plants and flowers and stuff. I don't know a lot about flowers, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's a good chance to see a lot of the kind of botany of the world, I suppose, in one place. And it's right here in London. It took me a while to get here. I've got to say, driving in London, wow. Okay, so that takes me back to Chicago. Picking up that rental car in Chicago. Never driven on that side of the road before. Never driven that car before. Driving around a pretty big city. But London, London's somewhere else, even over Chicago. I mean, just, just getting one mile. And this isn't even central London, you know. One mile across London in the car. Took me a good part of 15 minutes, just uh, traffic lights, traffic lights doesn't even really compare to, to LA. I mean, I drove around Los Angeles and there was a lot of traffic there, but Londoners have a different, different take on driving, definitely. Can't say I'm looking forward to driving around much more here, but I'll be flying out tomorrow. First, let's check out Kew Gardens.
So this is Kew Gardens and I've had very little time to look around really. I must have seen a tiny part of this amazing place. It's, it's huge, absolutely huge. The palace behind me and it's magical as well. I know it's not the coolest thing you could do with your time. You know, it's not very rock and roll, like looking around plants and stuff like that, you know, whatever. But it's so, it's so, you know, those, uh, those movies where you see British things, British country houses and gardens. That's exactly what this is, and there's so much of it as well. I've seen all kinds of plants from all over the world, um, and there's a lot of information. I, I didn't have time to take most of it in. And like I said, I'm not really a, a botanist, so I don't really understand a lot of it. The incredible thing about this place is it's in London, one of the busiest cities in the world, but it's just uh, some kind of oasis of tranquility, you know. It's uh, really peaceful. I didn't come on the busiest of days, which is always good. But the, the, the variety and the amount of people here as well is incredible. There's, there's lots of kids, there's people my age, people younger, teens, there's older people, there's people of all kinds of uh, skin colour, race, everything. Disabled people, lots of people, you know, in wheelchairs. And it's just nice to see that like this is a sort of place that everyone can enjoy. Wish I'd had time to see more. I'll have to do for today. Well, good morning from Premier Inn. <laughs> quick overnight stay after my journey to London yesterday we'll be getting on the plane later today but last night went out for some great uh, food it was supposed to be a, a Nepalese restaurant that we tried to go to but the, the menu was very much standard curry Indian which isn't a bad thing the food the food was absolutely fantastic and uh, had a great time uh, so just enough time to Get a good night's sleep. Uh, wasn't the best premiere in ever, which not exactly a luxury chain anyway. But it doesn't matter. It's fine. And then nothing quite goes to plan when I travel, as always. <laughs> so we had a, a slight charging issue. So um, let me explain. When I travel, I take a like a power strip with me. We've got lots of stuff to plug in and charge, you know. So I had power strip with me, expecting to plug it into German outlets, so I've got a German connector for it. Forgetting, of course, that I've got one night here, and I need a British plug to plug it into the, the British sockets, which I didn't bring. No problem, I thought. I've got a spare uh, single plug that I can use to charge. And... Um, I've got a vaporizer, you know, like a, a vape for, you know, vaping <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. But it has a it has an outlet on it, like a pass-through charging mechanism. So I thought, I plug in the vape, charge that, and then charge my phone from the vape. I daisy chain it, plugged it all in, fine, went to sleep, and then luckily woke up naturally because the phone hadn't charged and was off. Now the reason for that was <laughs> the phone took up more battery than the, the vape could consume from the charger. So the phone had completely de depleted the vape, which couldn't charge fast enough. So they both just burned out. So now I'm in a situation where I can't charge either of them quickly enough. So, <laughs> so I, I have no phone and no vape. Which is interesting. So uh, if you don't see me again, I've got lost somewhere on the way to Gatwick <laughs> with no phone and no way of contacting anyone. It'll be fine, I'm sure. But I check in again from uh, one of the airports, heading to Gatwick and then Heathrow, and then Berlin. Maybe that'll be a surprise. Welcome to Heathrow Airport. We are in a uh, futuristic pod on our way to the airport. You ever seen anything like this before? Uh, take a look outside. I want to hear a funny story. The art 
about storytelling, telling story through art. In every story that I tell, be the truth and from the heart. I was never very good at what the phrase implies, cause I never saw the point at all for telling lies. Guess it's how my father raised his only son, passing on stories of days when he was young, like his father to him and his father before. I've heard stories of the good times, stories of war. I've heard stories that helped me through another. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Berlin. We have arrived. It was a very good flight. And a uh, very nice trip here, actually. It was pretty easy. We got a taxi down from the hotel and uh, uh, to the hotel. And it's a beautiful hotel. It's probably one of the best hotels I've stayed in from what I've seen so far. Lovely bar. Guy playing the piano in the bar randomly. Everyone's really friendly. Uh, so, what did we learn from uh, Wilhelm in the taxi, Steve? We learned that you should not look like me in Germany in certain areas. And uh, might be attacked by neo Nazis. Only certain areas, I understand. Um, so, we'll be staying away from those areas. Also, Pre drugs are bad. Dr yeah. Okay. They're all bad, all of them. But, um, what are we up to tonight? No idea. We're going to scout Berlin, I think. Impressions so far? I know we haven't seen much. Germanic. It's very Germanic. Yeah. Industrial. Yeah. So we're going to head out, find a little bit of food, and then um, see what German nightlife is on offer. We'll catch you later. Alright, it's Saturday morning here in Berlin, and uh, let me tell you about last night, because that was interesting. Uh, we managed to find a place, we took some recommendations on where might be the best place to go. Um, I'm sure everyone's got different opinions here in Berlin, but we ended up at a place called Trezor, which is um, on the east side of the city, like a lot of the clubs, I understand. And it was basically indescribable. We don't have any pictures to show you because uh, they don't, don't allow filming of any kind, photography, no, you can't do that. So you're gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, it was mental, I've never seen anything like that before and I probably will again before I leave Berlin but after that I don't think that sort of thing exists everywhere. Uh, this was probably, uh, well, it was a factory of some kind originally uh, maybe a metal foundry or, or something like that. I'm not sure on the exact history of the building, but uh, they haven't done much to it inside, put it that way. Um, yeah, it's definitely got that concrete walls, um, iron bars everywhere. It is truly, truly um, very raw inside. And so was the music. It was crazy. So I'm from, uh, and originally from an island called Jersey, one of the Channel Islands, and this um, this place was occupied by the Nazis during the Second World War, and as a result, we have lots of uh, sort of Nazi ruins left there after the war, like, um, concrete fortifications and things. And it re that that place really reminded me of, of those kind of things. Obviously, not not the Nazi stuff, but the the way they built it, the concrete. It was just um, it was it was very sturdy. Should we put it that way? Um, what really struck me was how different people are, people act in these clubs. Because in Germany, you tend to go a lot later. You know, we didn't go in there until after one in the morning, and that's about the time getting on for the time in the UK when things are finishing. So people tend to take it a lot more easy. You know, they don't feel the need to cram as much alcohol into their faces as, as, as possible before everything closes. Because things don't really close here. Um, Everyone was great, like I uh, didn't see anyone that was overly drunk inside or aggressive, starting a fight or anything, you know. Uh, bump into somebody by accident, everybody's cool with that, you know, which is great, like really nice. But um, fascinating experience. We are still looking to do Burkane, which is the, um, sort of the most famous club in Berlin, uh, but we'll have to check back in another night to do that. So today, I'm going to be heading to um, the zoo station 
to meet up with uh, Schiff, who is a Twitch viewer, has been for a long time, and lives in Berlin, so he's offered to show us around Berlin. Check back in later. Saturday night here in Berlin and uh, Steve and I had the chance to explore the city a little bit today with the help of uh, Twitch viewer Schiff who very kindly agreed to meet up with us and take us around which was really good because we had no idea what we were doing on public transport or anything like that. It's, it's always a complication when you go to a, a foreign place but uh, we figured it out because uh, he was there to help. It was great, really hot day in Berlin, uh, we saw lots of things. Um, we saw uh, a crazy uh, war statue. Um, I can't remember what it's called, even. We saw Alexanderplatz. Um, but really, the culmination for me was uh, going to see the, the Berlin Wall, which is uh, now mostly not there, but there's a, a very large stretch with some really nice murals painted on it from artists all over the world and uh, it was really good to see that. Uh, it's been an ambition of mine to see the actual Berlin Wall for many years and uh, it's my first trip to Berlin so good chance to see that. had some brilliant German food, went to an amazing German restaurant. I had a huge uh, pork shank with a bone sticking right out of it. Such a Germanic dish. It was incredible. Uh, I think we all enjoyed the food in there. And, you know, really for a big city, I didn't think it was that expensive. So, plan for tonight is literally just to go out and find some, uh, find some food. We're not really sure what yet. And then uh, I have been, I have been shopping earlier to get the, uh, let's put it politely, the most the most gay outfit possible to uh, to attempt to get into Berghain, the, the famous Berlin club with a notorious strict door policy. So I have the outfit and we're going to go there at what we consider to be the easiest time to get in, 
which is about nine o'clock in the morning, in the morning, bearing in mind it's a nightclub, uh, on Sunday, which is tomorrow. No guarantees whatsoever. We will give it a shot. We will try and get in there, but we can't guarantee it. There's no way of guaranteeing you're going to get into Burger King. You turn up, they look inside your soul, and then you probably don't get in. But we will give it a shot. First, though, we can go out and get some food. Experience Berlin. So it's Sunday afternoon here in Berlin, and uh, we had an interesting time this morning. We got up early, uh, deliberately, to go to Berghain, which is um, one of the most famous techno clubs in the world. And it might seem strange. Why would you go to a, a nightclub at nine in the morning? Uh, it's famous for many reasons, but one of them is its door policy. Uh, which keeps a lot of people out and makes it very popular so the, the queues to get in are very very long it's uh, on the east side of uh, well the city would have been east germany at the time i suppose uh, eastern berlin and it's a disused uh, power station from what i understand again like a lot of these these places they weren't needed and rather than let them go derelict they converted them into entertainment not clubs that kind of thing and uh it's, it's door policy is very strange, as in nobody really knows what it is. What they're trying to do, as far as I understand, is keep the, the atmosphere inside like nice. They, they, they want the right atmosphere inside, whatever that atmosphere is. Um, so they'll just literally try and get your measure. When you stand up at the door, they will get your measure and they will say, in you come, or they will say, no. Nope, not today. And that's what they said to us. Unfortunately, we did not get in, which is a shame. That there's no real knowing why, you know. Uh, you're not going to have a conversation with them and say, why didn't you let me in? That seems a bit unfair. That's not the way it works. You go there, they say no, you walk away. Maybe you try again. We won't be able to try again because we, you know, we don't have enough time. Uh, it would have been uh, one of the highlights of a visit to Berlin to be able to get into that place, but worth a try, definitely worth a try. We weren't um, we weren't bitterly disappointed because you need to go to a place like that expecting to be turned away, and it's kind of like a nice surprise if you're not. So fair enough. So from here, uh, we're going to head out to Lollapalooza, the the music festival, and uh, the primary reason. For our trip, which is to go see Radiohead, so I will uh, try and take as many pictures as possible and report back later. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, Lollapalooza, September 2016. Radiohead, excited, Steve? Very excited. James Blake's playing at the moment. I quite like him as well, but. Main attractions Radiohead really, so that'll be in a few hours. What is the attraction of Radiohead? Um, possibly one of the most groundbreaking, uh, breaking artists of all time. Um, probably had a, at least three or four albums in the top 20 or 30 albums ever created. That's obviously a subjective view on my part. And what, like, for somebody who doesn't listen to Radiohead, we never really maybe heard a few songs, but that's it. What, what is the, what is the thing that will get them into it? Uh, time. It's a bit of a time dump. It's um, it's not an instant gratification thing like Taylor Swift, for example. Uh, it takes time and effort, um, like most good things in the world. Well, second time I've seen them live. Uh, it'll be a couple of hours, so make sure to get some good pictures, and uh, we'll check in later.
pretty amazing experience seeing Radiohead here live in Germany. The German festival was, yeah, um, I mean for me the crowd. The crowd was, considering that it's a festival crowd so they're not all Radiohead fans, um, so you don't get the normal sort of Radiohead. I mean some of them will have been, definitely, maybe a lot of them were. There are people from uh, from all over, I mean, not just German people here, people travelling from other countries to see this this festival and this, um, this band. Everyone was great. You know, we didn't get too many people trying to push or you know, cause any trouble. Again, a lot like what our experience of going to a, a club in Germany, which is which was fantastic. We, we didn't get anywhere near the front of this particular show. I don't think there was any way, realistically, to get closer. There were a lot of people, a lot of people, yeah, to see uh, Radiohead. And it didn't disappoint either. It was a fantastic show. I felt like um, well, they played a lot, basically their entire new album, which is what Steve describes as headphones music, which is very introspective. It's a lot more melodic and really thought-provoking than their previous work. Not that the previous songs or albums were devoid of thought provocation, but it's not going to be an album that everybody can instantly dive into, which makes it even more interesting that they chose to play that so much of that live. Uh, they are fantastic performers live. Hopefully You've seen some of the footage, and you can decide for yourself. I'm not going to convert you to a Radiohead fan just by <laughs> making a video about it. But, you know, if it's something you've never really considered before, maybe go back and look at some of their stuff and decide for yourself. On a great trip to Berlin, we're about to head back to the airport now to make our way back to Britain. So, um, definitely a place that I would like to come back to. There's so much here that I haven't been able to explore enough of it um, but yeah great great people great hotel as well really fantastic and uh, very easy to get to from the UK surprised that the flight was very quick and painless and the airport was again equally equally so oh and the weather the weather while we were here 30 degrees sunshine all day every day you don't get that often in Britain I hope you enjoyed a, a little look, not exactly a comprehensive series of videos about Berlin and uh, the Lollapalooza festival, but very much enjoyed sharing it with you guys. Until next time.